Hey everybody, what up? All right, so in this video, I wanna talk about some of the most annoying web trends that I've seen over the last like decade plus, and it seems like it just gets worse and worse. Um, so this is in no particular order really, but um, how often do you go to a website and it's like some off the wall website where you're visiting for the first time, it could be a local business or something like that, and you're just doing a quick Google search and the first thing that you're, you're prompted with is like, join our newsletter and it wants your email address. Uh, I find that so annoying that these users that have been there for the first time, they just, everybody gets treated the same and you're just given this annoying pop-up. Like, why would I want to give my email to some fly-by-night company uh, or some product that clearly I don't have any sort of repeat interest in, you know? So um, I, I seem to see that all the time. Uh, and just because we can do something like, I mean, we just drop in a little script and, and everybody's doing it on their website. So I really don't think it does any justice. And usually the first thing I do when I see that is I back out and just, don't even bother with the website. Um, so another thing that we constantly see nowadays is now ever since this uh, GDPR law got passed into uh, regulation, it kind of started, I guess, in the European Union, and then it spread over into the state of California. And um, now pretty much every website is going to have either a banner at the bottom or a pop-up saying, hey, you have to accept our cookies in order to view the website. Um, I know a lot of people are concerned about privacy or whatever, but it seems like even with all these like disclaimers and stuff, companies are still doing unscrupulous things. In fact, when I do a Google search, I don't recall ever giving my address, but it still looks at your IP address and it ends up uh, delivering stuff to you uh, without actually signing in or, or uh, authorizing that sort of thing. Um, so with cookies, I know that there's a lot of discussion going on, like uh, we're getting rid of like third party cookies and um, cookies in general are, are just not the best way of doing things, but uh, the, the point being is that there's a lot of privacy issues and to deal with that, we now have annoying banners on every single website that we visit for the first time. And I think nine times out of 10, probably 10 times out of 10, we're just saying, okay, and uh, clicking to close the banner and, and allow our cookies to be written so that we could actually view the content on the website. Uh, so in my opinion, it's something that they tried to do well, but it became just an annoying thing. Um, so the next one is like notifications on every like website. It seems like I go to on a mobile phone. I get the pop up that says, Hey, you know, so-and-so would like to give you notifications. Uh, just like a newsletter. Why would the hell would I want you to spam me through my email? And I certainly don't want you to spam me through notifications that are going to pop up on my cell phone for again, some fly by night website or pretty much in my opinion, any website. So I have notifications turned off on most apps. And I certainly don't want notifications on websites that uh, want to share that information with me. Uh, it's bad enough with emails and stuff like that. Um, so the next thing is probably in the same regard as like sharing your location. Like it's like, Hey, sign up to our newsletter. Oh, I don't want to do that. Accept our cookies. I don't want to do that. Um, share your location. And it's the funniest thing when it's like some blog or something, you're like, you're reading a blog article and it's like, why the hell would you want to know my location? Now, if it's something like Airbnb or it's a, you know, e-commerce shop or something where there might be physical locations, I can understand wanting to know your location, but it seems like j there's a lot of websites out there that just because they can drop this in and, and use this API that uh, they want to collect your information, including your location for some weird reason. Uh, the next annoying trend is anything that's behind the paywall that is on a Google search. Uh, this particular article is just an example. I wasn't even reading it, but I was looking for an example in New York Times uh, is constantly something where it's like, oh, some economic news or something. I'll see this co come up on a search result and then I click on it and it's behind the paywall. So in my opinion, it would be nice to have that feature turned off altogether. So basically Google don't serve me results that are behind a paywall. I don't even if it's a dollar a week, I'm not going to pay hundreds of dollars to see content from all these main uh, news organizations and such and it would just be better to not have them in the Google search at all um, So I would say another annoying thing is like responsive web design has been around since 2012 and There's still websites that number one don't have any responsive theme. So in this case this HTML is using media queries CSS media queries and it can scale the content to your phone uh, and that's all well and good. Um, so if you don't have this at least, um, and it's 2023, like what are you doing? And then in addition to that though, I see a lot of websites that do have responsive web design, but then like certain content is missing or functionality is missing or simply the website doesn't work at all. Um, so 
Another thing that I find annoying uh, is like if you go to anything on your cell phone that has a mobile app, so something like Yelp, uh, if you're looking at a review for a local business or something and Yelp pulls up a result, it always tries to drive you to the app. In fact, I've found that the web-based content on a cell phone isn't even accessible sometimes because they just force you to download the app. So I think Reddit is another example of forcing users to download an app versus just allowing us to view it on a web-based application since we went to a website on our phone. Um, so yeah, that is a trend I, I hope uh, dies at some point. Another thing is, uh, th this is an example of this pop-up like, hey, like get breaking news alerts and sign up for this newsletter. It's a good example of um, this business insider and like, no, I don't wanna do that and you're annoying me with this stuff. Um, but then when we talk about advertisements, that's kind of another annoying trend I would say in this day and age because ad um, revenue has been down across the board across YouTube across like people just using uh, Google services and such uh, we're finding ad placements to be extremely annoying and it reminds me of the internet back in the 90s when it first came out uh, that there were just ads and like you go to Yahoo and like it was just all this garbage and then there was a tiny little search box to search the internet when I was brand new to the internet I was like how the hell does this even work like where am I supposed to even search i think i'm supposed to search but i'm just like clicking on stuff and like it just got you know getting crazy results um so when we talk about ads like the way that we display them is just gone out the window like google used to have a bunch of rules in regards to how advertisements could be displayed so video ads couldn't be played automatically um like all this flashing light and stuff that's going on in the the modern day internet is quite distracting and then Google breaks their own rules. So like, here's an example of, this is not zoomed out, but um, you can see that Google takes up the entire page. So they used to say, don't have ads, uh, you know, in the first top part of it, like the, the, the center fold or um, I, I forget what they called it, but like the top half of here, you can see Google nowadays breaks their own rules that they set as a standard across the entire web. And, and they just give the whole page of sponsored ad results that they're getting paid for. Um, so another annoying trend I find, and this isn't really the best example of it, but like Hot, uh, HubSpot here, they have this um, as used by. Now, this is a much larger company, a multi-billion dollar company. So in this case, it probably makes sense for them to have a bunch of uh, logos of companies that are using their product. But how often have you come to uh, a website that's like a fly-by-night product or it's a small piece of software or something, and it's like, you know as seen by or as used by or as mentioned by and you're just like no there's no way uh, that those companies are using it and sometimes you can kind of bend the rules of like hey my product is in another product that is then you know a, a large open source product or something and then i can just add this to my website that all these different companies use my stuff so as an example like my code hawk website like if i were to say oh because i've been sponsored by uh tech uh, TechSmith and uh, Active State and Linode and Wix and a bunch of other companies, some of them like billions of dollars. Why don't I just put that on my courses or whatever? Like, hey, you know, the, my work has also been used by this and that. In fact, um, there's universities, right, that have actually used some of my content, but like I don't mention it on my website because it's not really uh, relevant to what it is that, that I'm actually doing there. And, and And to be honest with you, like, when I when it's mentioned, oh, used by, well, it's used as an offline resource, some of the Python stuff that I did at like, um, I can't even remember now, but University of California was one of them and then uh, Carnegie Mellon at one point. And anyway, but it was just like, and then someplace in London. So the point is though, is I don't even remember. And it was just simply something like, hey, we wanna use your, your courses as an offline resource, is that okay? And I'm like, yeah. That's fine. Uh, but I wouldn't put a banner and say, hey, like my stuff is actually running uh, the University of California or something like that. So you could stretch the rules, I, I think, when it comes to like as seen by or as mentioned by. Um, so, yeah. And then as far as ad placements, I mean, when we talk about this stuff, how many times have you been to websites where the actual content is still loading and jumping around? So you go to click on like read more or something and then all of a sudden there's an ad where you clicked. Um, so that's like a known way that come that websites are getting around people not clicking on ads is simply just jumbling the content around uh, for the first few seconds that it loads, especially on mobile apps where you can easily 
click the ad when you don't want to. So yeah, that's basically my video. So and, and, and to sum this all up, I find the most annoying things is the newsletters, the notifications, and the sharing your location. I don't think you should be asking for any of that stuff unless you have repeat customers. And it makes sense, obviously, to know your location. And you should be a trusted product. So if you're not like an established business that has a lot of customers, I don't think anybody's going to share their location with you. And if they do, it's probably by accident. Um, so, yeah, let me know what you all think. Uh, are there other annoying trends that, that you can think of?